Okay, so every time we want to understand the relationship that is between partial pressure and vapor pressure, we have to look at the, the concept of Dalton's law of partial pressures. So it also applies to vapor pressure. So exactly looking at what we have in this case, we have hydrogen gas. Okay, so I read the question. Hydrogen gas is produced when zinc reacts with sulfuric acid. So I'll write first of all the reaction that we have. We have zinc reacting with sulfuric acid. So sulfuric acid is H2SO4. So what are the expected products? We expect to have a salt production. So zinc sulfate plus hydrogen gas. Okay, that's something to expect. Huh? Okay, so the products, of course, we are told thereafter, if 159 milliliters of hydrogen gas is collected over water, so every correction over water, you have to expect something like this. Okay? So it's like, this is what you have. And then, of course, you have water there. So that is correction over water. So you have kind of like a tube that comes like that. And then you find that on top there, you have production of what? Hydrogen gas. Now, every correction over water, you expect that there should be presence of what? Of vapor on top as well, on top of the water. So we've got vapor pressure and hydrogen gas as a mixture. Okay? So, just a reminder, on the aspect of, of Dalton's law of partial pressure, the total pressure of a gas mixture is equal to the summation of the partial pressures of the gases in the mixture. So pressure one, pressure two, of course the partial pressures. Okay, depending on how many they are. So in this case, from our collection, that tube, we've seen that in addition to hydrogen, we also had vapor pressure at present. So we are restricted to the pressure of the pressure of the hydrogen gas so, say pressure of a gas plus the pressure of vapor. Okay, so this formula is also very useful. If it comes from the Dalton's law of partial pressures. Okay, <clears throat> so understanding the question in favor, we are told, we are given the, the volume of the hydrogen gas that was collected. We are also given the temperature. And then we are given the, 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 the pressure of a mixture, which is the barometric pressure. And then we've been asked to determine how many grams of zinc were used up. The vapor pressure of water has been given. Okay. So in this case, for us to basically get to find the mass of, uh, of zinc, we know stoichiometry has to apply. The information we've been given has been given about the hydrogen gas, right? Okay. What information have we been given about the hydrogen gas? So we've been given its volume. We've been given its straight temperature. And then we've also, what else have we been given about it? I think those are the major things we've been given about it. So now, looking at this formula uh, in regards to the Dalton's law of partial pressure, what information do we have? So we've been given the total pressure, the barometric pressure. Uh, we've been given the vapor pressure of water. And then... What is just missing is the pressure of the gas itself. So we can use that formula so that we can have the pressure of the hydrogen gas. So the total pressure was 758. So first to find the pressure of the gas, we'd have to subtract the pressure of the vapor, which is, if it goes the other side, it would be minus 22.38. And then this is equal to now the pressure of the gas. So I've just like uh, performed the calculations direct. So 758 minus 22.38. What, what value do you expect to have? So I'm getting 715.62 ta. Okay, I don't know if I say we pronounce that word, but oh, that's basically how you get to calculate the, the pressure using the Dalton's law of partial pressures. So at this point, we now have the pressure of, uh, of our gas. Okay? That's very important to understand. So... You know that for us to work with a stoichiometry to get the amount of you know zinc that was uh, available there consumed, we we'll have to look at uh, the aspect of the number of moles. 
So the only equation that can help us is the, the ideal gas equation where we look at um, PV being equal to NRT. Okay. So looking at the hydrogen gas, we've been given its pressure. Uh, the volume has been given. And then what else has been given? The, the temperature has been given. So looking at the temperature, the temperature is in 24 degrees Celsius. Is in degrees Celsius, sorry. So what determines the, the gas constant we get to use is uh, we look at the volume, volume and pressure. So if we want to use ATM and liters, the value of R is 0 0.08 to 1. So this applies to ATM, liters, Kelvin, per more. Okay, this is very important, okay? Very, very important to understand all that, okay? So if you don't understand, you can watch a video where I will explain what value of the rate constant you get to apply to, depending on the units you have you've been given. So looking at this value of R, it is a requirement that we need to have our volume in liters. And of course, uh, a liter is equal to a thousand milliliters. Of course, we know one milli is the same as multiplying by 10 to minus 3. So you can just divide by a thousand to have it in liters. So the pressure, we have to move from that to, to ATM. So we know one ATM is equal to like uh, 750. Yeah, it should be 756. Okay, so we would have to perform that conversion from from partial from ATM, so from the tab that we've been given to to ATM, since we are using the so basically in this case, if we have uh, let me put it this way, so seven sixty, sorry, so this is our. <laughs> So our pressure, one ATM is equal to 760 at ta. So we've got 715. So we'll have to say the conversion factor is one ATM is equal to 760 ta. So in this case, we have 715.62. So cross and multiply, try to find the missing value there. So 715.62. Point six two uh, divided by seven hundred and sixty. Uh, what value am I getting for eight terms? So zero point nine four. So our pressure is zero point nine four. Zero point nine four one six ATM. So we have our pressure. So zero point nine four one six. Our volume has to be in liters by dividing 159 by lit by 1,000 uh, with 0 0.159. The number of moles, we don't know. The R is 0 0.08 to 1. The temperature, 24 R, so we go to, you know, to Kelvin temperature. So 24 plus 273, 273 plus 24. 297. So all the units are matching up with the, the constant. So directly, you can just divide both sides by the product pair. So in other terms, we are just moving all this, dividing it to both, both sides. Okay, so grab your calculator there. 0.9416 multiplied by 0 0.159 divided by 0 0.0821 divided by 297. So the value of the number of moles I'm getting is, is basically equal to, so number of moles is equal to 6.1399. Times 10 to the power negative 3 moles. That's the value we're getting of, of the hydrogen gas. Now, as it stands, if you look at the more ratios going back to isotheometry, which I believe you've already done, if you haven't, if you've forgotten, try to check it out again. So, hydrogen gas is in the ratio of 1 to 1 to zinc. So, in that case, 
what we understand is the number of moles of hydrogen gas that we produce are basically the number of moles equivalent to zinc that was used up. So in that case, we now have, we can just consider this to be the number of moles of zinc. Now, if we check our periodic table, our molar mass of zinc is 65 grams per mole. So if we have the moles in the grams and, and the molar mass, we're able to find the mass. How do we basically get to do that? So we just basically get to multiply 65 grams per mole multiply by the number of moles, 6.1399 by 10 to the power negative 3 moles. So the moles will cancel out, you remain with the grams. So after multiplying, the answer that I'm getting as the mass, or the grams for our zinc that we have produced is a value of 0 0.399 grams of, of zinc were actually produced in this in this question. So in this question, we've basically seen that the Dalton's law of partial pressures apply even to vapor pressure. Okay, we've also seen the use the usefulness of the ideal gas equation when it comes to dating, uh, you know, stoichiometry to gas pressure. So that's it for this video. Thank you very much for for watching.